A portion of today's episode is sponsored by Onshape. Hit that link in the description and stick around to the end to find out more. But right now, something fun is about to happen. On with the show. I'm a little worried here. Testing with the full Joel. There you are, welcome back. I have something really exciting to show you and it has to do with mountain climbing and exploring and possibly the breakage of things. It's called the frog connector, normally made of metal and something that is patented. Well, YouTuber Electrosync found out that the patent had expired and this meant he could investigate and he found it was ripe for 3D printing. Awesome. And so Electrosync took to his computer and catted up the design for a 3D printable frog. And that's what we have right here. I was able to print this in PLA, standard PLA, fantastic. I was also able to print this in ABS, which is also fantastic. Now, I keep thinking we should probably test these. It makes sense. You know, I can build a test rig, but PLA and ABS, that's not the full story. There are other materials, other fantastical materials that we have access to. And thanks to my buddy Thor, the God of Thunder, over at Impossible Objects, we have access to CF Peak and CF Nylon. For a refresher, Impossible Objects is a company we stopped by their booth at Rapid. I talked to Thor, we became best friends. The polymer particles will penetrate the page. The uh, polymer particles will penetrate. That's a lot of P words yeah, there. Yeah, I like that. That's my warm up. And he explained the process. And there's going to be a link down below where you can go to to see that interview again because he did a wonderful job. But just to kind of shorten it up a little bit, essentially, carbon fiber pads are flooded with material and then inserted into a press that puts tons and tons of pressure at temperature to make the parts. And here's what they look like. Look at that. Now remember, we talked to Brandon at Ascentium, and that ting sound is because this material has a high modulus. They even sound metallic sometimes. That sounds like metal. Here's why I want to include some more engineering materials in our tests. PLA, rigid material, not the strongest. ABS, not as rigid, slightly stronger. CF Peak and CF Nylon, light years ahead of these materials in strength and durability. So here's the plan. I need to build these out with the instructions provided by Electrosync and his YouTube channel. And then we're gonna take these to the garage and we're gonna put them to the test and we're gonna see which material holds up the best. The SnapFit connector build is time consuming a little bit, but not for the reasons that you might think. Uh, you do need to get a drill bit and prepare the holes in one side. At that point, a screw goes in the middle, a washer goes down, one of the folding little arms goes in, a washer goes down, the other folding arm goes in, washer goes down. Now it's time to make the spring. You're given a jig that gives you an up and a down arrow, and I used two drill bits in the holes just because they seem to fit, but this is what you turn the spring around. And then I brought it over and I put the drill bit in, I did it around that drill bit a couple times on that side, and I brought, I brought the ends out, and then I bent them in the way that the arrows told me to go, one side up, one side down, and I put that spring inside the connector. It, it, it connects under one of the arms and it connects over the other arm. Now you've got tension, so be careful. But then the top side or the bottom side, whichever way you have it facing, goes on. And then the middle screw is held on with a nut. And then the two top screws, those posts, hold on and keep the ends at a certain distance from each other. And once you've done that successfully, you have yourself a functioning snap fit connector. Oh. Finally. We're now out here in the garage, and right here is a little test jig that I built. And here's the great part. The wood was reclaimed from an old project, and the screws were reclaimed from a shelving unit I took down, and the hook at the bottom that everything attaches to was from when I put the bikes on the ceiling at home. I had a leftover hook. My ratcheting strap is something I had, and so um, reusing and repurposing, right? Yay me. That's how you do it. Using the ratcheting straps and this luggage crane scale, we're gonna test and see how many kilograms worth of pull each one can withstand. 
There's PLA, there's ABS, there's CF Peak, and there's CF PA12, which is CF Nylon. I want you to enter your guesses in the comments below before we get started. Here we go. ABS, testing in three, two, one. CF Nylon, here we go. Here is CF Peak. <laughs> I'm scared, I'm really scared. <laughs> Whoa, honestly, there were some unexpected results there and I, I wanna go through it. So here's what we're gonna do. Here are all of the broken pieces, the ones that tried and did not succeed. I've got the footage from the GoPro up. It's high speed footage which means there's more frames captured per second. So we can kind of get an idea of the break and we can see the final number on the luggage scale thing that I was using. So first up, before we get into that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Onshape. Onshape is a cloud-based CAD platform that allows businesses to build their products, companies such as Formlabs and Trek. It's browser-based, meaning it doesn't care what operating system you're choosing to run. Think of it like Google Docs, one document shared amongst a team collaborating at the same time. This means team members from around the world can collaborate on the same project at the same time on nearly any device they can think of, including Android and iOS. Try Onshape for free at my link, onshape.pro forward slash 3D Printing Nerd. And now enjoy the rest of the show. I wanna talk about the PLA. Have a look. Okay, so this part's intact, but the two pieces that come together, well, and this piece, oh my goodness. Okay, it looks like it was a failure of the part on multiple pieces. What's kind of great is the evenness of it because it failed all at once. And so it gave all it could give. Let's take a look at how much it was able to hold on. It's going, here we go. Oh, okay, we saw it. PLA, 139.8 kilograms. That's like 140 spools worth of weight. That's incredible. Okay, good job, PLA. I'm really proud of you. How about a hug? Next up was ABS, and this surprised me. I was under the impression that ABS was going to hold on longer than PLA, but it seems like ABS broke a lot sooner. And if we take a look at the model, it has less damage than the PLA counterpart. That's why I'm just not, I'm not quite sure, but the tail is in the tape. So this is ABS. Oh my gosh, that was so fast. Oh, look at those pieces. You can see the pieces actually flying through the air. 89.8 kilograms, almost 90 spools of 3D printing material is the weight which the ABS one held. You know what? I just honestly, I, at this point hit pause and I want you to comment down below. Do you think this ABS result is valid, or do you think we should retest with a different ABS? Just let me know down in the comments. Next, I believe, was the CF Nylon. Now, if we take a look at this, it's missing some parts. We do have a crack right here, so it looks like this part was in the process of, of giving up, and this is where the main breakage was, so it's almost like this was the only thing really holding it. I'm really curious, let's take a look at the tape. Okay, I, I still get a little antsy watching this. 108.8 kilograms, almost 109 3D printing spools. That's fantastic, so more than ABS. So PLA came in higher than the CF nylon. I didn't expect that. I feel shocked. Last. And certainly not least in our super scientific tests was the CF peak. Peak being polyethyl ethyl ketone. And if we take a look here, look at the mechanism, the actual frog mechanism is completely intact. The spring came loose. I can put that back in. The failure was on this part. Interesting. And when you have a look at it, it's a different version of the model. So it's curious because it lasted longer than any of the other materials. And at the same time, it had less material to last with. So it might be worth having impossible objects remake this one, but with this model to see what it could hold. But now 
Let's see how much it could actually hold. I gotta stand up for this one, look at that. <laughs> Man, that, that snapped. I need a smarter everyday high-speed camera. Destin, if you're seeing this, I'll fly you out here and if we wanna redo the tests, let me know. The last number I see right when it breaks, 198, 0.8 for a split second. A kilogram is 2.2 pounds, so 198 times 2.2 is over 400 pounds. That is well above what a full Joel is. That gives me an idea. And we're back in the garage and my test rig has been moved out of the way. We've cleaned up a little bit because I have another one of these. So this is CF Peak from Impossible Objects put together and according to our previous testing, it should be able to hold me. So now what I'm gonna do is take one end, I'm gonna put it through <laughs> the snap close connector. I'm gonna go up here and snap it into place. So now what we should have is something that's still capable of holding my weight. I'm a little worried here. Okay, snap close connector, CF peak from impossible objects, testing with the full Joel. Yeah! Yes! I was worried. I was worried. But it's holding me. All right, if you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a gosh you believe in. And as always, high five. <laughs>